According to one of my sources, Tesla's Cato Road 4680 battery factory will be temporarily shutting down for three months beginning in November. But why would Tesla do this? Stick around as I talk about why I believe this is actually good news. I'm John, and this is Cleaner Watt. As far as I know, Tesla's Cato Road facility is still manufacturing first-generation 4680 battery cells with first-generation equipment. However, Tesla's battery factory at Giga Texas has new equipment and is making new second-generation 4680 battery cells, which were referred to as cyber cells in a recent Tesla conference call. These new batteries have 10% more energy density and the equipment used to manufacture them is also quite a bit more efficient. While I don't know the official reasons for Tesla temporarily shutting down their Cato Road facility, I personally believe that it is to allow Tesla to switch out their Generation 1 machines with new, more efficient Gen 2 machines. After all, if second generation battery production at Gigafactory Texas is indeed going well as it appears to be, this change would make a lot of sense. And if this is correct, it's a great sign for Tesla's 4680 battery production progress if they're uh, willing to update uh, the old facility to the new equipment. In Tesla's Q2 2023 conference call, Drew Baglino had the following to say about Gigafactory Texas, quote, First, I'll just start with a bit of a production update. So in Texas, 4680 cell production increased 80% Q2 over Q1, and the team surpassed 10 million production cells produced here in Texas. So congrats to the team for that. I'm definitely looking forward to another update coming up, hopefully in a future conference call. And I hope that uh, Gigafactory Texas had another big increase. But previously with this data, I um, extrapolated backwards and estimated where I believe um, Tesla was sometime around mid-June of this year when it comes to 4680 battery production at Gigafactory Texas. Here's a chart that I put together that I talked about in a previous video based on estimates from some of the best numbers that I could find I believe it's very possible that back in June of this year, mid-June of this year, Tesla was already hitting a daily rate of around 100,000 4680 battery cells being produced per day at Gigafactory Texas, which equates to around 700,000 per week or around 1.6 million per month. I'm hoping that now that we're in September, that that rate is at least more than twice that um, because we really need to see uh, Tesla's 4680 batteries ramp up at Gigafactory Texas if they're going to be able to build um, a good number of Tesla Cybertrucks. Because once again, as a reminder, the Cybertruck will be using Tesla's new Cyber cells, uh, Tesla's new 4680 battery cells. So once again, with the Cato Road facility being shut down, if Gigafactory Texas battery production is going well, and it appears once again, based on what I just talked about, that it is going really well, then installing this new equipment at their factory there, their pilot facility there um, in Fremont would make a complete lot of sense. Now, when it comes to Tesla's second generation battery manufacturing equipment that they're using at Gigafactory Texas, and that I also believe they're going to be installing at their Cato Road facility, I wanna talk about just how much better this next gen equipment is. Back in July, Joe Tegmeyer, who has been sharing drone footage of Gigafactory Texas for several years now, shared some images on X.com looking into the 4680 production area of Giga Texas. I sent these images over to one of my sources, and it was confirmed to me that this was indeed second generation battery equipment being seen in this image. Specifically, these new next gen machines should have integrated the notching, winding, and current collector welding into a single, more efficient machine. Now I do want to explain what notching, winding, and current collector welding are. What are those steps? Well, first of all, starting with notching. As you know, Tesla's 4680 battery cell is referred to by Tesla as a tabless battery cell. And instead of traditional battery tabs, an edge of each electrode foil has been sliced into a lot of different little flags that then get folded over on top. Well, the cutting of all those little slots, those little flags, is called the notching, and it's done by lasers. So that's one process that's done by this three-in-one machine. Previously, it was done by a separate machine, but now that's done 
as a part of this machine. The winding is when you actually wind up the electrodes into the jelly roll. And so that's a process that's done as well with this uh, three in one machine. And the current collector welding is self-explanatory, but you're actually welding the current collectors um, to the anode and cathode side of the battery. Um, and this is all being done once again in a single more efficient machine. Supposedly these new second generation machines reduce the number of staff per battery line by around 20% and likely reduce the number of machines needed by somewhere around 30%. And these are obviously substantial improvements. Now going back to Tesla's Cato Road facility, beyond the original facility on Cato Road, um, it was reported back in June by the San Francisco Business Times that Tesla signed a lease for a 210,000 square foot manufacturing facility and that, quote, the facility will support production of Tesla's 4680 battery cell technology. For perspective, Tesla's Cato Road facility has a square footage of around 183,050 square feet. So this new facility that is supposed to support Tesla's 4680 battery production, um, it more than doubles the available space there at their Fremont facility. I don't know if Tesla is actually manufacturing 4680 batteries at this new facility or if it's just going to manufacture part of the batteries. Maybe part is going to be manufactured at one section and another is going to manufacture um, another part of the battery. It's also a strong possibility that one of these two facilities will actually be working on their third generation 4680 battery cell because obviously Tesla's always needing to work towards the next battery. So once they get the second generation version like they are right now working well and it appears to be working well, then they're going to be constantly moving towards the next better version of the battery. Once again, I'm just guessing on this, but I think it would make a lot of sense to convert the new facility to manufacturing second generation battery cells that would go into the standard range all wheel drive Model Y and these second generation battery cells could increase the range of the standard range all wheel drive Model Y to over 300 miles of range. That would be substantial. And at their pilot facility there, the original Cato Road facility, they could start prototyping and working on their generation uh, three 4680 battery cell, one that would be even more energy dense than the current second generation battery cell, which already saw a 10% energy boost over the generation one battery cell. One of the changes that I would expect in a third generation battery cell would be the inclusion of silicon in the anode of the battery, because as a reminder, Tesla was able to achieve a 10% energy density gain with their second generation battery without adding silicon to the anode, but rather just by redesigning the battery itself just a little bit. And one of those big changes apparently had to do with a redesign of the battery cap itself to a more low profile design, which allows more room for the electrode, which then of course increases the energy density. Tesla has now removed the 4680 equipped standard range all wheel drive Model Y from their um, design studio ordering webpage which may be related to this upcoming temporary um, Cato Road shutdown. With that being said, if I do hear an official reason for the shutdown of the Cato Road facility, I will uh, give an update, so stay tuned for that. Also, if you're watching this video and you have information about this that you can share with me, feel free to email me. My email address is john, J-O-N, at cleanerwatt.com. john, J-O-N, at cleanerwatt.com. Um, once again, if you have anything to share with me related to this or really anything else that is related to Tesla's battery production, feel free to email me. I'd love to hear from you. Um, but I'll keep you updated if I hear anything, so definitely stay tuned. I do want to say thank you to all of those of you who support me through Patreon. Your support makes a big difference and does help make these videos possible. If you'd like to find out more about how you can support my work through Patreon, I will put a link in the video description. Thank you so much.